Good morning, um, everyone. And as the oldest member of the committee, it falls to me to uh, chair uh, the first two items on today's agenda. Um, and so I'm taking the chair at the moment. So I would like to welcome uh, members to this, the first meeting in 2016 of the newly established uh, Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. Um, as is normal, can I ask everyone to turn off their mobile phones? And can I also advise our colleagues uh, that apologies have been received from Elaine Smith, who can't be with us today. Um, the first item is to allow uh, members to declare any interests they have that are relevant to the work of the committee, and um, bearing in mind the, the notes that we've received on this. Um, and so I would like to begin, if I may, by declaring my own interests uh, as a farmer uh, and as a landowner. I um, invite others to do the same, Stuart. Uh, I have no relevant interests to declare. Convener, I have no relevant interest to declare. Rachel? I have no relevant interest to declare. Okay, that's good. So we now move um, to the next task, which is to choose a convener. Um, and the Parliament... So I'd invite members of... Uh, the Parliament has agreed that only members of the Conservative Party are eligible for nomination as convener of this c committee. So if I may... Could I invite members um, to nominate um, someone for this um, task? I would like to nominate yourself, John Scott, as convener. Thank you very much, uh, Rachel. Um, is the committee agreed that I should be chosen as convener? Of agreed. This agreed. Thank you very much. Um, the next item of business is to choose a deputy convener. And the Parliament has agreed that only members of the Scottish National Party are eligible for nomination as Deputy Convener of this committee. So I'd invite members to nominate um, someone for that task, please. Convener, I would like to nominate Stuart McMillan as Deputy Convener. Thank you very much. Um, so are we agreed then uh, that we will choose Stuart McMillan as our Deputy Convener of this committee? Agreed. agreed. We are. Thank you very much. Congratulate you, Stuart, on your appointment as Deputy Convener. Um, we now move to Agenda Item 4, uh, which is for the Committee to consider its approach to developing a work programme. And I'd refer uh, members to the paper uh, received from clerks on this. Um, do members have any comments on the paper? Um, and if not... Um, one of the things that we, we want to do is to hold a business planning meeting um, towards the end of the summer recess, um, known in the parliament parlance as, as an away day. Um, I think Ewan will probably um, bring a paper on this subject um, to us at the next uh, meeting. Uh, but if we can agree in principle at the moment that we would be happy to do this, in the past, um, I think we would expect, hope, to probably do this towards the end of August so that um, it doesn't clash with anything that people might be doing in July and the first half or, or three quarters of August. Um, in principle, would, would everyone be happy with that sort of arrangement? Yes, agreed. OK, uh, and we'll get sort of further details uh, at the next meeting. Yes. Um, and I particularly want to ask uh, the committees, um, for the committee's authority to um, to delegate uh, to the committee's legal advisors um, the authority to ask questions of the Scottish Government in relation to instruments uh, as a way of considering um, um, the work as soon as it lands on their desk rather than having to wait on every occasion for our authority to be given for them to ask questions of the government. So if we can uh, delegate that power to them, then as soon as it hits their desk, they can get started with the work. Um, would 
everyone would be happy with that, Stuart. Mm. Uh, thank you, convener. It's, uh, I certainly think it's something that we should be doing, and this, uh, as you'll be aware, convener, I was a, a member of this committee in the last session for a period of time, uh, and I know that uh, having that flexibility uh, for the legal team to pose those questions uh, when required it certainly uh, was advantageous to the members of the committee. So it's certainly something I would uh, wholeheartedly agree with. Anyone else have any comment to make? No. Nope. Uh, well, thank you, Stuart. That's, you're absolutely right. That's very helpful. And it's very important that we do do that. So we are agreed that we will delegate that authority uh, to our legal team. Um, we now move to agenda into, uh, item five, um, which are the instruments uh, subject to negative procedure. Um, the first one will consider the Common Agricultural Policy Direct Payments Scotland Amendment Number Two. Regulations 2016 SSSI 2016 uh, The instrument fails to comply with the requirements of Section 28.2 of the Interpretation of the, and Legislative Reform Scotland Act 2010. The instrument was laid before the Parliament on the 17th of May 2016 and came into force on the 18th of May 2016. The instrument does not respect the requirement that at least 28 days should elapse between the laying of an instrument which is subject to the negative procedure and the coming into force of that instrument. Does the committee agree to draw this instrument to the attention of Parliament under Reporting Grounds J, as it has failed to comply with the requirements of Section 28.2 of the Interpretation and Legislative Reform Scotland Act 2010? Agreed. Thank you very much. And mindful of the reasons provided by the Minister for Parliamentary Business in his letter to the presiding officer of the 17th May 2016 for proceeding in this manner, does the committee agree to find the failure to comply with Section 28 to be acceptable in the circumstances? Agreed. Thank you very much. We'll now move to the Sexual Offences Act 2003 uh, prescribed police stations Scotland amendment regulations 2016 SSI 2016 187 and the instrument amends the list of police stations which are prescribed for the purposes of the notification requirements in the Sexual Offences Act 2003. Our legal advisers raised an informal query with the Scottish Government regarding the postcodes of five of the police stations addressed, uh, addresses amended or inserted by the instrument. These postcodes appear to be incorrect when compared with the details for the police stations held by the Royal Mail. The Scottish Government responded to say that the postcodes identified had been checked by Police Scotland again and confirmed that they are indeed inaccurate. Uh, does the committee agree to draw the instrument to the Parliament's attention under the general reporting ground in respect that, firstly, there are errors in the police station postcodes substituted by regulations 2, 2, um, N and O, and secondly, that there are errors in the postcodes in the entries for Helensborough Police Station and Keith Police Station as inserted by regulation 2, 2, P? Have we agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Does the committee also agree to note that the Scottish Government intends to correct these errors by further amending the Sexual Offences Act 2003 Prescribed Police Stations Scotland Regulations 2014 at the first opportunity? Agreed. Thank you. Um, no points have been raised by our legal advisers on Air Weapons Licensing Scotland Regulations 2016 SSI. 2016-188, and no points have been raised by our advisors on Food Information Scotland Amendment Regulations 2016 SSI 2016-191. Is the committee therefore content with these instruments? Great. Content. We are. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to... Agenda item six, which is instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. And agenda item 
and in that context, no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Land Reform Scotland Act 2016, Commencement No. 1 and Transitional Provision Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-193-C16. Is the committee content with this instrument? Content. Thank you very much. And I think that brings us to the end of the first meeting. So um, that's it. Um, I now close this meeting.